I'm going to start cleaning up and uh, the components for this water damaged shutter and I'm not sure how much of the shutter will be useful to use um, discover that as I go I'm starting with the shutter case and it's very water stained a lot of corrosion stains on here they shouldn't affect the function to any large extent they just look ugly but I'm seeing how well this case cleans up I know from the state of a lot of the internal components of the shutter that I will be using enough parts to really require a donor um, if I'm going to require a donor shutter I might just as well service the donor shutter as a whole and use the entire shutter if it's going to produce a better result than using some components from the donor and some components from the original shutter. You can see here the amount of filth and corrosion that's coming off the shutter. 50% of that probably would be dirt and grime and grease and oil that would have been in the shutter regardless of its history. Um, and the other 50% are corrosion products I would imagine. And as I say this camera apparently went in the river and I don't know whether that was a, a nice clean sparkling river or a dirty muddy river so who would know really the camera didn't appear to be quite bad so we'll assume it was nice clean water So I will persevere cleaning up a couple of these major components and then make my decision. This will be a fairly late shutter, late model shutter as 3Cs go. It would be nice to put back a very similar shutter if I can't make this one go. Or if it's not worth the trouble of making this one go, I'm sure I can make it go. I'm just not sure it's worth the extra hard work. Oh, well, that case, you can probably see the corrosion marks in the case there. particularly there at the uh, where the retaining ring would screw on the back there's quite a bit of uh, marking there I'm just going to clean the retaining ring and you can see how much a lot of that's oil stains oils that would have come from the focus helical probably I'll pop this retaining ring on, I want to see how smoothly it rolls on there. Actually that goes on very smoothly. So it might look a little bit ugly in there but there's no problem with that thread. It's uh, smooth and doesn't create any impediment to uh, doing up the retainers, retainer ring so 
There's our case and retainer ring. The case is stained. A little poke and prod at this with a uh, wooden toothpick to try and see if surfaces that components will be moving on are rough to the extent that it would make a difference to the way the shutter works. And although those surfaces are quite stained, they feel smooth. Running a toothpick across them, I'm not picking up uh, any large amount of friction or uh, roughness. So I think that case is quite good. We'll pop it to one side. Look at some of the other major components. Let's start here. This is the lever from the back that the controls the flash sink, MX, and it also controls the setting of the self timer. So I'm just cleaning this now to see if those fairly obvious dirty marks are serious corrosion or just dirt or light corrosion or a mixture of two of those things. And it looks quite good. You sort of have no hesitation about using those parts. Here's the aperture setting lever. That's quite stained. It seems to be cleaning up quite well. The stains look like corrosion, but uh, they may very well be just oil and dirt. Now there certainly is some rough feeling there. I was running that cotton bud across there and I picked up some roughness on there. Yes, there's just a few tiny bubbles of corrosion there. This is nickel plated steel. This needs to be able to move quite freely, otherwise the aperture and uh, shutter speed won't move in concert. You don't want the aperture being left behind. You might hear a faint click as you shift your shutter speed across and the aperture might not shift at the same time. So I'm looking at this quite closely now. The retainer screws that hold this in place, the heads of them run in this little groove here. So I need to make sure that that's clean and smooth, no rough spots. There's three tiny spots there. A little bit rough. I'll pop that to one side, we may or may not use it. This steel shim, that runs directly underneath that lever and needs to be quite smooth. And this of course is uh, not nickel plated. And it shows a considerable degree of surface corrosion. To the extent that I wouldn't use that part.
this component. This is the ring inside the rear of the shutter case that controls the position of the diaphragm blades so that as you set the aperture, as you turn this ring, it swings the aperture blades in, the diaphragm blades in or out. It's quite stained with corrosion. in one area. Those are probably surface deposits. I th this ring is uh, chemically blackened brass I think, it's not steel so it won't have rusted. The deposits that you see will be deposits from the metals that it's been running against. The white deposits were certainly deposits from the aluminium case. The brown deposits on the other side were rust from the steel diaphragm blades. So I'm just checking the state of this ring, seeing if it's smooth enough to use. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to clean that with some metal polish and see what happens. Okay, well I've used a bit of Brasso and cleaned up that ring and I'm more than happy with the state of that. I think that's, that's fine. That'll certainly do the job. I don't see any problem using that. We have this retaining plate, this is the retainer plate for that diaphragm assembly. As you can see that's quite stained. So I'll give that a quick wipe and see what just lifts off immediately with solvent. And then I'll have a go at it with the metal polish and see if that cleans the rest of it off to a satisfactory state. And if not, that'll be replaced. There's a mixture there of rust, which are the brown stones, and some white patches, which will be corrosion products from the aluminium shutter case. This plate, it's, uh, it's more important that this plate is nice and clean. Don't want any friction on these surfaces. The shutter blades run directly against the surface. Alright, so I'm just using a toothpick again and I'm rubbing it across the surface to see if I feel roughness. If it's significantly different in feel from where the surface is shiny and apparently clean or where it's dull, then it means that the dull area is probably rough to the extent that it would be a problem to use. And yes, uh, it certainly doesn't feel smooth enough to me, so that component's had its day. We can forget that. The diaphragm blades, appear to be fairly uniformly rusty. And there's absolutely no future in attempting to reuse those blades. So they're rubbish. And 
the mechanism plate and shutter blades. The shutter blades were stuck to the uh, plate. That's certainly too rusty to use. That one would probably clean. As would that one. That one's a definite maybe. Two of the blades are possibly useful. They'd have to be polished with brass though anyway. I'm looking at the mechanism plate itself. Now it's very oily here so I can tell that the shutter had a lot of oil in it. Um, it was probably not running particularly well even before it did went, before it went for a swim. Let me open this. I'll remove these three screws that hold the lens tube to the mechanism plate. This bracket that holds back the main spring, the main drive spring for the shutter. That looks quite uh, rusty, stained. The lens tube certainly shows some rust deposits on it. This is brass. Any of those deposits are strictly just marks on here that will probably clean off. That won't be a problem. This is the blade actuating ring. This is the piece that actually swings the shutter blades open and closed again. That's rusty. It's not worth trying to fight with that. That's had it. The mechanism plate itself. Well, there's obviously rust deposits on that surface, but the mechanism plate is anodized aluminium. Those marks will probably clean off. I'm more interested in the state of any steel parts on this plate. Uh, checking to see if there's any roughness. Um, suggesting that the steel parts are, aren't pivoting freely, for example. Or that the springs are damaged. That all looks pretty good. That will potentially clean up and I'll have a go at that and uh, see if it cleans to my satisfaction. Well, I was successfully able to clean up the lens tube, the mechanism plate, that bracket for the main spring, and it's the three screws that hold the lens tube to the mechanism plate, and three of the shutter blades. They cleaned up well with a bit of Brasso and uh, of course after you've cleaned them with Brasso you have to clean them with solvent to remove any traces of the, uh, the polish. But they're all good. So that's the, uh, that saves me a bit. So we're still down the blade actuating ring and two shutter blades which were just too badly corroded to do anything with. So I'll continue cleaning the other components up. I'll find one of a parts shutter in my stock of parts and uh, hopefully we can reuse as much as possible of this shutter so that the camera is as original as we can possibly make it for the owner. This being a uh, a camera that had been passed down through the family, so there's a bit of uh, sentimental value there, I believe. Well, these are the parts that I'm going to have to replace from the shutter. Um, all of them are steel parts, all of them are rusty, and uh, I consider them to just be beyond useful being beyond being useful to me. This plate here is the only component that is not steel but the corrosion is etched into the surface there a bit, left some roughness. I'm not happy about that so I'm going to replace that component as well. 
So I've gone through my shutter parts. I was hoping to find an entire shutter of a uh, close match, but I couldn't do that. There was just nothing there. Um, in fact, I had no entire late model five diaphragm blade shutters of that nature. I only had the earlier ones. But I did gather up the parts I need and these have all been cleaned and uh, will be ready to be assembled into the shutter. The only difference between these components and the originals which I'd taken from this shutter is the diaphragm blades. Now it's a five leaf diaphragm blade um, but as you can see, the original blade was slightly different in this corner. Now its pivots are in exactly the same position, but this corner has been clipped off in a slightly different fashion. This is the style more commonly found, and this is the style I had in my parts. And these will be the ones I will be attempting to use. I'm not foreseeing any problems, but I suppose we'll find out. So that's the only part I've identified that there was actually a change in the componentry and um, I honestly don't think that's going to make any difference to me. So I'll start by assembling the diaphragm because uh, that's what I normally start with. So I will bring in my jig. Start with the plate and assemble the blades to it. The diaphragm blades for setting the aperture of course have to move smoothly with the controls but there's no requirement that they move swiftly unlike shutter blades. The diaphragm blades of course are interleaved each blade is on top of the blade at one end on, at one end and under the blade at the other, which makes them entertaining to assemble. Typically not so bad where you've only got five leaves to worry about. I can see here, though you may not, that this blade is sitting slightly high. In other words, it's got a bit of a bend to it. And that is almost certainly uh, been caused by that particular blade being slightly bent. Um, either because while the shutter was being cleaned someone managed to bend the blade that's not at all a difficult thing to achieve or alternatively it'll be because um, there was oil on the blade at some stage and that was forced the setting was forced and the load on that blade because one end did not want to move and the other end was being pushed that force was enough to just distort that blade, bend it out of shape. Right, so I'll put the setting piece in place. I'll check my case again. It looks good. The case of course only goes on in one position, so I've got to carefully lower this into position. There's a little post there which 
lines up. That seems right. Just help that click into place. Remove that part of my settings jig and find the appropriate screws which I've probably carefully not sorted out in advance three screws the same but there's one other in the shutter that looks very similar but it's just slightly longer so I have to be careful not to pick that one up by mistake or more accurately I have to be careful to put it back after I'd picked it up I'll just run these screws in lightly to start off with I need to check that those blades are in fact all seated or that the rivets, the pivot points on those blades are seated where they should be So I'm looking at the casing from this side, I can see that the five pivots are all neatly in place. Of course you can't see much from the other side. I swing the, my adjuster back and forwards and you probably saw that that was not a circular opening to start off with. That's because one of the blades had popped out of its slot. But by moving the plate backwards and forwards it picked up the slot now I can tighten those screws up those pivots are all correctly placed this plate only goes on here in one position of course it's got a little pin on it to make sure that it'll only line up in one spot occasionally you'll see when people have serviced these shutters they've carefully scribed some mark across here to, to help them with the alignment but if you look at the components, there's only one possible way that plate could have gone in. And so that's all, all redundant work. You don't need to be scratching lines there. So I'm checking the freedom of movement here. It moves reasonably freely. It's not as smooth as I would like. I'm going to put a little bit of graphite powder in there and work that backwards and forwards and uh, see if I get an improved result.